We're going to take a look at the sum and difference formulas and then afterwards the double angle formulas. So why do we need sum and difference formulas? So unfortunately, if you were trying to find, for example, the cosine of 75 degrees, you could say, okay, well, that's the cosine of 30 plus 45. So I'm just going to be able to do the cosine of 30 plus the cosine of 45. And unfortunately, you cannot do that, okay? We wish that would definitely make our life easier, but it doesn't work like that. And when we evaluate it, when you do it, when you prove these formulas actually graphically, which we're not going to do in this class, uh, but you can take a look at your book for that, um, they will show you visually why it does not happen like that. So what we need is we need to know, well, how does it work? So if you take a look, you're going to have two formulas for cosine, two formulas for sine. One is the sum formula and one is the different formulas. So whatever helps you kind of, you know, memorize these, like for example, for me, what I remembered is for the cosine, the cosines are grouped together and the sines are grouped together. For sine, the sine and cosine are uh, interchanging. They are, they're uh, put together. So sine is always with cosine. The other thing that helps me is alpha is always with beta. So in the formulas, you never have alpha together and you never have beta together. And then the last thing that kind of helps me is for cosine, the sine changes. So if it's the sum formula, it's going to be minus. And if it's the difference formula, it's going to be plus. And the only way you're going to get comfortable with these formulas is just using them over and over again while you're practicing and writing them down all the time. So we're going to have a few different types of problems. We're going to begin by finding the exact value. We want to find the cosine of 7 pi over 12. Now, 7 pi over 12 is not an angle we know in the unit circle because it has a denominator of 12. And 12 is we only do denominators of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite 7 pi over 12 as a sum and difference of, four, of angles we know, just like I did above, like when I rewrote 75 as 30 and 45. So the way that we're going to do that, and there are actually going to be infinite amount of ways to do it, I'm going to show you two examples, is that we need to do it so that whatever you put in the numerator reduces the 12 at the bottom. So one that would work would be 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. And the reason that works is because 3 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 4, and 4 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 3. And that's 45 degrees and 60 degrees, and both of these are angles we know. Another example could be 9 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12, right? Because nobody said it had to be a sum. It can be a difference. And this works because this would be 3 pi over 4, and this would be pi over 6. Those are both unit circle values that we know. And then again, you could, there are multiple ways of that you can do this, infinite amount of ways. Most of them would be a difference, the ways that you could do it. So I'm going to go with the most, the easiest that I see here, which is the first one, the, the 45 and the 60 degrees. So I have the cosine of 7 pi over 12 is equal to the cosine. And I'm going to move this up a little bit, give us some space. So this is going to equal to the cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. I'm going to write the formula cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So pi over 4 is alpha and pi over 3 is beta. So this is going to equal to the cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 3 minus the sine of pi over 4 times the sine of pi over 3. And now we need to plug in the ratios. So the ratio of cosine of pi over 4 is a positive radical 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 3 is a positive 1 half minus the sine of pi over 4 is a radical 2 over 2 and the sine of pi over 3 is a radical 3 over 2. And everything is positive because pi over 4 and pi over 3 are all in quadrant 1. So remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the top and you multiply the bottom. So in the top, I will get square root of 2 minus 4, square root of 2 over 4, apologies, minus. And then the second one, because they're both square roots, they both are the same radical, the same root, I can multiply what's underneath. So I'm going to get square root of 6 over 4. 
And they both have the same denominator, so I can combine them under a single denominator. So I get square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. Let's do one more for good measure. So sine of 19 pi over 12. So I want to think about 19 pi over 12. Again, there are multiple ways to do this. Let's see, I'm going to pick 15 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. That will be 19. And that reduces to 5 pi over 4 when I divide it by 3 plus pi over 3. Okay, so that gives me the sine of 5 pi over 4 plus pi over 3. This is going to be alpha. This is going to be beta. So I get sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. Because in the sine formula, sine and cosine are together, and alpha and beta are always together. So then you plug in. So I get the sine of 5 pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 3 plus the sine of pi over 3 times the cosine of 5 pi over 4. So now we need to evaluate the angles. So 5 pi over 4 is in quadrant 3, and it has a reference angle of pi over 4 which means both sine and cosine of 5 pi over 4 are going to be negative because in quadrant 3, they're both negative. So the sine of 5 pi over 4 will be a negative radical 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 3 will be 1 half. The sine of pi over 3 will be radical 3 over 2, and the cosine of 5 pi over 4 will be a negative radical 2 over 2. Then when I combine my fractions, I get negative radical 2 over 4 minus square root of 6 over 4. So that's a negative radical 2 minus radical 6 all over 4. Another way you could write it, just so that you see, is you could put the negative in the front, factor it out, but I mean, that's not necessary, just in case you were to see it like that. And here it is. And they, the answers look similar because they both have denominators of 12. So they are both going to have the same reference angle. The sign is going to change. Okay, let's see another type of problem. So the cosine, we want to prove. So now we are proving an identity. So that's what we just learned in the previous section. I'm going to go left to right because there seems to be a little bit more to do left to right. So when I see a sum of angles, I have to use the sum formula. So if I have the cosine of pi over 2 plus theta, I'm going to be able, this is going to be alpha, this is going to be beta. So I'm going to write the formula like I've spoken about in the past, the best way to remember formulas is just to write them over and over again. Anytime you do a new problem, you write the formula again. So then when I plug it in, I get cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of theta minus the sine of pi over 2 times the sine of theta. Well, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. It's right here. And the point is 0, 1. So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, which means that all of this is 0, and then I get negative sine theta, which is exactly where I was trying to go. All right, let's look at two more examples. Okay, this one would be very tricky at the beginning because if you didn't know the formulas. Uh, because what's happening here is that instead of giving you the formulas in the, the smaller version, it's giving you the formula in the expanded version. So I'm going to write it so that you can kind of see it. So the sum formula of cosine, which is the one we actually been using the most, is this. So instead of giving it to you, the version on the left, which is how I gave it to you in number two and how I gave it to you in number one A, what we're going to do is that it's actually giving it to you in this version. So this is the formula right here. So this is what it's giving you. And like I mentioned, that would be hard if you didn't know the formula. But once you start to know the formulas, then you can recognize it. So that means that alpha is 40 degrees and beta is 80 degrees. So when we combine it, that gives us the cosine of 40 degrees plus 80 degrees. So now I'm going to write it on the left-hand side. That gives me the cosine of 120. 120 degrees is in quadrant 2. It has a reference angle of 60 degrees. 
which means it's gonna be a negative one half for cosine. And there it is. Okay. All right, so a very common question in this class has been previously like, if cosine is equal to this, what is sine? So this question is gonna go similar to that. But instead, we're gonna be looking for the sine of alpha plus beta. So what it's gonna give us is, it's gonna give us something about alpha and then something about beta. So you're gonna hear me say this a lot when we're working with the formulas in the next few videos, which is that if something has a formula, the very first step is to write the formula. Don't start drawing triangles, don't start talking about quadrants because you don't know what you need. So if something depends on a formula, the very first step is for you to write the formula. So the formula is sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. And now you can see that you need four ratios. Which ones are given to me? Well, the ones that are given to me is sine alpha and sine beta. So I have two out of the four ratios that I need. So how am I going to find the others? Well, just like you're used to. If you have one trig function for an angle, you can find all the other ones. So first, I'm going to start off with alpha. So I know that the sine of alpha is 3 fifths. It tells me that alpha is between pi over 2 and pi. That puts me in quadrant 2. I draw my triangle. Don't forget to place your angle. Otherwise, the opposites and adjacents don't make sense. And that says the special right triangle. So this is 4 which means that the cosine of alpha will be a negative four-fifths because I am quadrant two. And then beta. I have the sine beta is negative one-third. Beta is between three pi over two to two pi, so I am in quadrant four. So one, three. That's going to be nine minus one, which is the square root of eight, but simplify is two radical two. So the cosine of beta will be a positive 2 radical 2 over 3. And now I have all my goodies. So I have all my ratios. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I plug in. So sine of alpha is 3 fifths. Cosine beta is 2 radical 2 over 3. Plus sine beta is negative 1 third. Cosine alpha uh, is negative 4 fifths. So in the first one, I get 6 radical 2 over 15. Negative negative makes a positive 4 over 15. And they have a common denominator. So I can do 6 square root of 2 plus 4 over 15. And here's my final answer. I can't simplify that because 6, 4, and 15 don't share a common factor. So this is it, and they're always gonna have a common denominator with the sum and difference because what I mentioned before, alpha and beta are always paired together, which means that the denominator of alpha will always be paired with the denominator of beta for both of them. So you'll always get a common denominator.